Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to another Commute Talk. Today, I thought I would talk a little bit about um, huge, gigantic projects like an operating system and how you can engage with such a project um, or start and, and do such a project without getting completely crushed under the, um, um, under the weight of everything that is involved. Um, so I, I come from a long line of huge projects, although this is the first one that I start myself, um, but I've worked on huge projects for, you know, the, the better half of my uh, adult life, so I have some experience with that. Uh, and I would say the, the biggest, most important piece of advice, and or, you know, a lot of a lot of what I'm about to say is gonna sound kind of cheesy and like generic advice, but it really is um, the way that I think about this, and it really uh, I'm I'm really just gonna speak from like personal experience that's relevant like today. So this is how I'm thinking about this today and how I'm applying this today. Um, so the first thing that I would say is that you gotta focus on the path and not think about the mountain that you're climbing. So, um, what I mean by that is that when you're climbing up a, a huge mountain or a medium hill um, or a small mound, then uh, you don't really see this picturesque, um, beautiful mountain as you're climbing it. You're just seeing the, the dirty path that you're putting your feet on, right? And you gotta, you gotta always keep that in mind when you're doing a huge project that you're just not gonna see the, um, the beautiful, picturesque mountaintop um, in your day-to-day -day grind because that's just not what the day-to-day -day is about. Um, and other people are gonna see that when they eventually look at how far you've come and, and, and you take that, uh, take that really nice picture uh, of your work. Um, but the truth is that you don't really get to you don't really get to enjoy that, and <laughs> uh, at least not as, um, at least not. Well, you get to enjoy it, but it's not. It's not the same when you know all the work that goes into it. Uh, it doesn't dazzle you, but that's okay. Uh, but you should really probably give up on the idea that you're gonna dazzle yourself. I think that's something that a lot of uh, inexperienced people um, sort of run into eventually is that it's it's incredibly hard to dazzle your dazzle yourself with software and and really with any kind of project um, I'm sure that it's possible but it's it's a rare thing so if that if and when that happens you know savor it uh, <laughs> anyways uh, so that's like that's the first and the most important thing I think uh, but then there's another thing that also happens if, if you do a project that gains a little bit of attention, um, which is that negative people are going to show up. Uh, this is just inevitable, it's like a force of nature. Negative people are drawn to positive development. Who knows why? Uh, and uh, they're going to show up and they're going to say things like, oh, why are you doing this? You're wasting your time. You should do this and that instead. Uh, or like, why are you doing this? It's already been done. It's pointless. Uh, it's never going to be as good as X, Y, Z anyway. And these people are pure poison if you uh, actually listen to anything that they say. And if you don't, they are just noise. Um, and you want to you wanna keep them in that second category. Um, these, these type of people, they're always going to be there. Uh, you're always going to run into them and they're never going to do anything good for you or your project. So your best bet is to just ignore them politely um, and go about your day. So I'm getting up on the highway here. Hopefully the noise is not too much. Um, but I would say I would say about those people uh, that I've personally had uh, quite a few or a few run-ins with them recently as uh, Serenity was uh, getting uh, some attention on uh, Hacker News and Reddit and places like that. Um, I received a number of messages uh, on various platforms, uh, very 
nicely informing me that um, it's pointless to try to write an operating system and uh, I should just join this other operating system instead and contribute there because uh, then we could actually achieve something. Um, and I was told that uh, C++ is a stupid language to use for an operating system and it's like, uh, it's like the project is dead from the beginning because of my choice of language. You know, things like that. Really helpful, productive things. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, so like, I, I don't think I, I don't think I, I really uh, humored any one of these people, uh, other than just saying like, I think I told one guy, um, that's great, buddy, or something like that. Uh, but that's really the extent of it. Uh, there is no value in engaging with these people. And uh, when they come for you, just ignore them. That's my advice to you. Um, so anyway, another uh, thing that I would like to mention also is the importance of having small goals and small milestones for yourself. Because when you do a huge project, like an operating system, you're never going to get to that point where you're like finished, right? Because it doesn't really exist. Uh, especially when you are doing it yourself, but even when you're doing it with other people, um, this finished, this elusive finished state is just something that you get to like arbitrarily define, um, like based on like I don't know bug counts or or a certain feature set or whatever. But we all know that project like projects like these are just never truly finished, right? Because even if you were to fix all the bugs and implement all the features you're still going to want to hack on it and do new cool stuff. So it's not going to be finished. And that makes it extremely important to set little goals for yourself and have little milestones that you're always looking forward to. Um, so to give some examples of what I've been having is when I first started out with Serenity, um, I think the very first big milestone that I had in mind was being able to load a program from disk and run that program and when you're starting with no code whatsoever that's a that's a pretty hefty milestone but it's not unreasonable um, for an experienced programmer to do that in um, you know like a two weeks or three weeks or something like that and when I eventually got there I was super happy because uh, I was able to achieve what I set out to do and I didn't give up and, and it was, you know, this positive reinforcement thing uh, for myself, which is really good for you. And, uh, but, but the important thing is that while I was going through the process of, of achieving that goal, I was also setting up new little milestones and new sub goals and stuff in the future so that I would have something to do after I finished my current goal. <laughs> And I think that's also really important is to always um, sort of stagger your goals or, or I don't know what to, how to say that, um, that you're always like, um, you're always laying out new goals in front of yourself uh, and in front of your next goal or behind your next goal, I don't know, after your next goal <laughs> so that you have something else uh, to do right when your current thing um, starts to feel like it's, it's good enough. And. Um, when you do achieve these little goals, you should savor it, enjoy it, you know, T tweet about it or show, show someone a screenshot or whatever, right? Because um, I, I very much believe that you shouldn't really celebrate success before you've achieved the success. So like telling people what your plans are, for instance, I never ever do that if I can avoid it. Um, you would have to squeeze me to get any kind of plans out of me. Uh, because I think that sharing your plans is that's just how you kill your motivation to work on those plans um, Because when you tell someone what your plan is uh, and they say like oh dude, that's a great idea and blah 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 then um, Very often you get sort of this little kick from um, Someone confirming that your idea is great and it sort of reinforces your uh, excitement about the idea, but once that kick wears off uh, I find that it's very easy to lose whatever motivation I had to begin with because now I got used to that kick being there like oh yeah I'm so excited about this idea now and then that wears off and it screws it really screws with my motivation to work on stuff so I just I just don't share 
uh, my plants if I can avoid it. But that's personal. If that works for you, then um, you know, do your thing. Um, but if you haven't thought about it, then at least think about how sharing your plants affects you and affects your motivation. It's worth uh, worth considering. Um, and what else? So another thing that is uh, important to me is to not be too committed to a specific vision. And um, certainly with Serenity, it's been the case from the beginning that I didn't really know where this project is going and I still don't really. I just sort of play by ear and figure it out as I go. Uh, which incidentally is super interesting when other people show up with patches because uh, they're not always going in the direction I would like to go but if they do good work and uh, they're responsive and um, you know engaged with the patch review process then I'm very willing to um, you know let people join in, in deciding the direction for the project and, and that's it's really fun and it's um, it's a very interesting organic process between software developers. Um, but yeah, so, so um, what, I, what I wanted to say was that uh, committing too hard to like a specific vision, that's just gonna hold you back. Like be flexible in your vision. Because <laughs> um, when you're doing a huge project, there's 0% chance that you can define exactly what that project should be from the beginning. You're not gonna do that well. Um, and uh, you just have no idea until you start implementing something how it's actually going to work anyway. Um, and that's just a, it's just a typical rookie slash um, manager mistake. Um, or I shouldn't I shouldn't like put that on all managers, but like it's an inexperienced manager mistake um, to think that you can uh, plan out and estimate how long things will take or how things are going to turn out and what features you'll implement and. What problems you'll run into it's just not very reliable uh, but yeah so so don't commit too hard be flexible uh, be willing to change your goals on the fly um, I mean within reason and then uh, about but about changing goals and, and like updating your vision though I will say <clears throat> uh, for me personally I, I try to keep a rule that I never change my plans or my goals um, while I'm frustrated or, or like while I'm experiencing some negative uh, emotion uh, because I don't want my negative frustrated self to decide what happens with my projects so I just like I let that guy do his thing but, but I don't uh, let him change our plan because I know that frustration will eventually calm down uh, you know, if I'm upset about something, that will eventually calm down and go away. Uh, and if I change my plans while I'm in that state, then I lose something. Something that I didn't have to lose. Uh, and I start to compromise with myself, which I just don't want to do. Because um, you're just, you're just, um, you just, what do you, what do you call it? you're just poisoning your project with your own negativity. Like I was talking before about other people showing up and being negative, but, but if you let your own negativity uh, control your project, you're just falling for that exact same trap. It's just coming from you instead from someone else. So don't fall for it, wherever it comes from. <clears throat> um, and then I think I, I would say there's one more thing that I can think of that's really important, um, which is consistency. Um, at least for me, that's extremely important, and it's it's really uh, really important to me right now. Uh, now that I've started a job, um, and it's consistency in work, and especially in dedication. So I try to do something every day in my project, right? So lately, I've been posting like a video a day. Um, and I try to uh, write code every day. I try to like um, talk with someone who's asking questions every day or file a bug. I, I don't, maybe I don't do all of these things all in the same day, but I, I try to do at least one or two of them every day uh, just to keep the, um, just to keep the, the um, stuff in, in memory and, and in context, stay in context all the time. 
um, because I know that if I drop the ball on this, then it's it's going to be difficult to pick it back up. Um, and that's not to say that you can't pick up the ball, it's just that it takes time to pick up the ball if you got used to the ball rolling in front of you all the time. And having the ball rolled in front of you all the time is really the best way to make fast progress on something. Like, uh, if I were to do this project only on weekends, um, you know, I would lose one hour setup time uh, at least every time that I was getting started, I would just have to like get reacquainted with stuff, and then I would lose so much time just because I wasn't uh, used to how everything is in the same way that I am now, that I do it every day. Um, and like the way that I'm doing it right now, also, I'm having a lot of engagement or like not not super much, but like a fair amount of engagement with um, with like you guys watching. Uh, you leave comments, uh, you tell me when I'm screwing something up and that's awesome, and then I try to do better the next video. Um, or uh, people give suggestions on things to fix, or people report bugs. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always staying engaged with this stream of feedback. And that's, uh, the, that's so much better than um, like disconnecting from it and then coming back in on the weekends uh, and then seeing like, oh, what can I do now? Uh, I'm sure that works for some people, but the rate of progress that you get with that approach is not the rate of progress that I would be satisfied with for my project, so, um, or for Serenity, I mean. And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's just what I was thinking about that. Um, I think I ran out of ideas now, <laughs> so I hope that, that some of that uh, maybe resonated with you or you found something interesting. Uh, like I said, I know that, that these are uh, kind of, some of these are, are very cliche, but they really do work for me. Uh, and I, I really find a lot of truth in them after spending, you know, many, many years programming and many, many years working on huge projects. So, um, you know, tell me what you think. I've, I've been actually very curious to hear from people uh, how you stay motivated on, on your projects and. And, um, you know, how do you engage with something huge without um, becoming intimidated by the hugeness of it? Um, you know, leave a comment. Let me know. And uh, we'll keep the conversation going. Uh, <laughs> so, other than that, I'm just going to go back to driving here. Uh, or, you know. So, thanks for hanging out with me on the commute. I'll see you next time.